Hi, is this Isabel? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, yes, this, hi, I'm Isabel, yeah. Um, Sorry, you, you go by Isabel, right? Not not Izzy, or, or do you care? I mean, my close friends call me Izzy, cool. or Isa, or whatever, but um, I'm fine with whatever nickname variation. I got you. I'm going to call you Isabel. Okay, no problem. Cool. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, um, I'm Isabel. I'm a 21-year-old detransitioner from Florida. And, um, yeah, uh, You're... I am currently... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I am, uh, I guess, in lack of a better word, suing my doctors as I did go through, uh, quote-unquote, gender affirming care as a minor. Awesome. That's great. You're you're born and raised in Florida? Yeah, so I was born in Orlando, so like central Florida. I grew up there for the beginning of my life. And then we lived in a couple of different places here and there as my dad was in the military. Got you, okay. Um, yeah, um and when I was in my mid teens we lived in Rhode Island. Okay. Um and that's where I, like, first started home runs home and stuff. Oh, okay. So, yeah. um, how did you hear about transgenderism? Like, how, where did you find out about it? Um, probably the worst place you can kind of uh, learn stuff in your formative years uh, on Tumblr. Okay. Um, <laughs> So you, but you were, uh, you were how old with a, with a Tumblr account? Uh, I was like 12, <laughs> which is not really good. Young. You're supposed to be 13. Yeah, that's, well, I think even 13 is really young, but, uh. Yeah, even then. Yeah. But. Is, is Tumblr still a thing? Do people still use that? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, especially in like, um, rad femme circles, plenty of women still use Tumblr for that too. I am, I'm not hip, uh. Well, that is a okay. So you, so you, that's where you found out about trans, trans everything was on Tumblr. Basically, yeah, just like seeing people post about it, the various different hashtags that people would use on their like selfies or just like informative posts, and then of course later down the line, like people e-begging and stuff like that. Oh right, e-begging. Forgot about that. Um, so very popular. In, in yeah, that, yeah. yeah. What? made you think you were trans so i as many young women do suffered from sexual trauma and just general like bullying like i was pretty severely bullied as a child um and you know that just kind of made me feel like uncomfortable with being female because it was kind of like is this really what women go through right type of thing and then hearing it from like other women whether it be like them in my family talk about those things that they've been through and since we're like hispanic a lot of that stuff doesn't get taken seriously okay yeah yeah like culturally some things are dealt with certain ways and it's either not taken seriously or the men are like i'm gonna kill this person and it's like oh my god i don't want either of those so i'm just not gonna say anything right right (laughs) So when did you start identifying as trans? Like, how old were you? Like, 12, 13. So it was probably about summer going into seventh grade, I believe. Okay, so you you basically got on Tumblr and then decided you were trans. Yeah, like, I had, like, a whole, like, breakdown of, like, oh, my God, wait. I, there's a reason I hate my body and stuff like that, which I feel like a lot of young women go through Definitely. regarding this, but that's like a topic for later when we talk about like our opinions, I guess, on sure, sure. why these things are happening. Do you remember any of the like, um, specific Tumblr posts where like you were reading them or, or seeing them or whatever, and you were like, oh, that's me. Like, do you remember what they said? Honestly, a lot of that time in my life, I don't remember shit. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. Fair. 
Yeah. Can I curse? Is that funny? Of course. I, honey, I curse all okay. the time. Um, yeah, all the time. Okay, so you, you were um, just had some general insecurities and, and history of trauma, and then you were in the pipeline to be trans, and you were trans. Um, mm -hmm. Did you, like, come out to your parents, or, like, what happened there? So I did eventually come out to my parents my dad was just kind of like okay whatever makes you happy to, to this day i i still don't know how he really felt which i should probably like sit down and have a conversation with him about it mm -hmm. but my mom tells me like you know he was just as confused as she was about the whole thing and just was worried for me yeah. Uh, my mom, it was more tears and stuff like that because, you know, I was so, like, in that, like, of, like, wow, you don't accept me? That means, like, th th that means the worst or, like, whatever. Right. Even though, uh, like, having conversations now with my mom talking about it and being, like, you know, she was just scared for me and for my future and she just wants me to be happy and healthy, you know? she. Right. Yeah. Are you are you an only child? No, I have two older brothers. Right. Okay. Okay. Um. So so how old were you when you came out to your parents? So. Yeah, like twelve. Okay. Probably. Okay. Like probably about to turn thirteen around there. I remember specifically that October. I was like, I'm gonna come out and coming out day, and I never did it. So it was after that. <laughs> I see. I see. Um. So then, like, so, like, you told your parents you were trans, and, and then what happened? Did they take you to the doctor, or, like, what was the, what happened next? So, not much really happened after that for a while. I was 12, and I started hormones at 14, so there was, like, a, a year that I was in therapy a lot. I was already in therapy at that point, because I've had emotional issues, for a long time from like being bullied and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I was already like in therapy and seeing a psychiatrist and like talking about all that. So did your, did you tell your therapist you were trans? I did. And that led to like some family sessions that were really awkward where there was like yelling and like, I feel really bad for those times in my life trying to convince my parents of, of that because I know they were just like confused and seeing their child suddenly become like this aggressive, I don't want to say monster, but like, like that aggressive, uh, affirmative, like affirmative, like this is what I want and this is who I am type of thing. Yeah. And you, and you like wouldn't, the you know the sacred tumblr posts told you that you should never back down and that you're always right yeah it's it's always like a very of the self very selfish yeah. i shall say oh yeah oh yeah so um so then you then you started getting medical treatment for this yeah so um, we were living in Florida at that point. We were back in my hometown, and then my dad, who was out of the military at this point, um, probably of like of like two years, I think, and he meets a woman on Facebook, and they fall in love, and then we moved up to Rhode Island where she lived. I see. And there happened to be like one of the few gender clinics there, and. There was like a lot in between me getting hormones. Like I went to the psych ward, and there was like all this shit that happened. But... Wow. Yeah. Okay. You know, honestly, uh, when I learned you were from Florida, I was kind of surprised because Florida is not so brain rot liberal. But now that you say you got to go to a gender clinic in Rhode Island, that makes more sense to me. Because I mean, I could I could tell you about the brain rot liberal things happening here. Because they're because they're they're real liberal all up there, like to it to the point of it being an no, issue. No, exactly. Like I have that experience, like dealing with that, going to high school, like identifying as trans, and like seeing 
what people would say to me and like what administrators would would do and like those policies it is such a strange experience but so you were in you were in school in in rhode island yeah so i went to like a public middle school and a public high school there got it got it um and you were trans you were out trans in school so that i was pretty much stealth well what they call stealth you've probably heard about yeah, that heard that you only tell people yeah yeah and so i was that in middle school even though the guys didn't believe it which i wasn't on hormones yet so yeah go figure i looked like a girl and then i was completely stealth in high school like people didn't know but i was on horm on hormones at that point okay did you yeah. did you change your name did you go by something different yeah i went by a lot of different names um there was uh the first one i went by and then I, and then when i officially like started presenting as m male i uh I, I went by something else but you know that's i've I've seen that happen a lot where trans, I've, I've really more experienced um, female to male young, young folk. I'm sure there are males out there, but like I, I've had more experience just interacting with female to male and I've, I've noticed that's a, a pattern with them is that they, they, you know, change their name to one thing and then they've been transitioning for a while and then they try and change their name to another thing, you know, like. It, it, it's it's literally just like these people trying to find their footing in the world and their identity in the world but doing it in like a way that doesn't really matter in my opinion right right it you does, know yeah like finding out what you're gonna call yourself is like the least of most people's concerns you know that's true yeah that is definitely true um so so you start. You said you started hormones in high school. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, my freshman, like, go like getting out of eighth grade, going into freshman year. Yeah, was around when I started hormones. And you, you were doing the injections. Yeah, the the weekly ones. Yeah. Okay. And so you you learned how to do that. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, they had like a nurse practitioner at the adolescent gender clinic, like teach me how to inject it. And then it was just kind of like, okay, I taught you. Now you know how to do it. Now you're free to do it. However many t how, times you need. How did you feel about it? Like just, um, you're not really faced by needles or that kind of thing. I mean, I didn't, I, I was a, a cry baby growing up. I kind of still am. That's just kind of who I am. But, I, I don't know how I like toughed it out so so good. I, like I I wasn't really in my right mind I guess. Yeah. Like I don't I don't know how I toughed it out so good to do that weekly for like three years. Yeah, that's that's pretty impressive. <laughs> because now now thinking about it, I'm like I would hate to have to do that again. Right. Yeah. Um. I. So. I was in middle school in like the, the aughts and I just happened to be in the nurse's office this one time and there was this kid that I kind of vaguely knew in passing and I didn't know that he was diabetic, but he, he came in the nurse's office and like checked his blood sugar and everything and like he knew how to do it, you know, perfectly and I was like shocked. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like he, I was like, wow, like he, but that was, you know, something he needed to do. But yeah, still, it's like something that he needs to do or he will die. Right, it's not right, like, right. Yeah. But still, I was like, oh, wow, like, he can, he can do that. Amazing, you know? So, like, did you kind of feel a sense of accomplishment when you learned to do that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely felt, like, happy during that time. But I guess it was because it was a sense of relief of, like, finally I get to, like, I didn't realize that at the moment, but it was kind of like a relief of I get to change who I am. Right. And like run away from all this shit that happened to me. Right. You're it's like a, a form of rebirth, like reinvention. Yeah. And I, I feel like a, a lot of uh trans people definitely feel that way. Oh yeah. For sure. <laughs> 
for sure. Were there other trans kids in your school that you knew of? Yes. Some that I was actually, like, friends with and everything. Like, how many were you friends with? Oh, like, three. And that was in your grade, specifically? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, so the school I went to was right... It, it, it's literally, like, so funny. It, it was right across from a youth LGBT center, oh, and then right God. next to Planned Parenthood. Oh, my word, okay. <laughs> yeah. Providence, Rhode Island is a is a crazy place. Like that is the most liberal thing you can think of. <laughs> yeah, that's a real clusterfuck right there. Um, mm -hmm. But so, uh, so you 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 were taking these hormones, and you you did feel like you were like becoming a new person. You were like escaping your past. Um, did did you feel kind of like? special for being trans so i mean not really i don't know I, I was one of the more like a little bit more trans medicalist leaning okay with that yeah so uh especially when i lived in rhode island i became a lot more liberal about it when i moved back to florida but yeah. It, it was, yeah, I, I, did, I, I felt like it was like, 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 like I don't know. So <laughs> I, I know what trans medicalist is, but can you just explain yeah. that? Yeah. So uh, trans medicalists are the people that believe you can be like, like the true trans, like true transsexual. Like it is a medical condition and you need to be heavily diagnosed for it and stuff like that. Like, they. It, I, I do kind of agree with some of them thinking like, yeah, you know, like you do that with your life and just like assimilate into society and don't be like a weirdo about it. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I guess is like the goal for the mo like a lot of them is to just like not be weirdos. Right. Right. Okay. Interesting. Um, so, so how long did you like, um, do the hormones and we're just doing that habitually and how long were you okay with it? How long did that go on? That went on. So I started hormones when I just turned 14 and that was like April, 2017. Mm -hmm. And then I was on them until April, 2020. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. so why did you stop? I kind of had this, like, moment where I was just kind of, like, realizing a ton of stuff and really, like, growing up and thinking more clearly about, like, what I was doing. Yeah. And, of course, the pandemic happened, and I was already toying with the idea to detransition at that point because of, um, uh, I saw one of the people's videos I saw was yours too, um, because famous trans YouTubers covered you and like your videos and stuff like that. And so I kind of was like curious. I was curious as to what other people had to say about these things. And when you actually sit down and listen to other people, you know, it's not all like the we want trans people dead we want trans people to be eradicated off the face of the earth like the trans community makes you think it's like these people who genuinely care about issues that are happening in our world and want things to be better whether it's for you know females or other marginalized groups and stuff like that right right well i'm i'm so honored that you found my vids and it at least helped you to come to the realization you didn't need to take hormones anymore. Um, did you get any like surgeries or anything? Thankfully not. I'm so grateful that I didn't because I definitely did want the, um, to get like a double mastectomy and stuff like that. Yeah. I binded for many years. Um, 
which was awful, and I'm pretty sure my ribs are damaged. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I was about to ask you that, if there were any, like, effects from having done that. Yeah, I definitely think my ribs are, like, a little warped. They're, like, bowing in the middle and then come out at the bottom a little bit. Oh, wow. So... Which is actually quite common with women who, like, long-term bind their chests and stuff like that, so... So did you, did you buy a binder? Yeah, so there's like the special companies that make like higher quality ones or whatever. But of course, none of it's good for you, but... What, do you know the company names? It was GC2B, like that's like the big company, I think, in that sphere, making that, like binders and stuff. Oh, that's insane. Um, so you just, you decided you were having some, uh, introspection, you were thinking about hormones and stuff, and you just decided to stop. Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of like, I, I still don't remember a lot of it very clearly either, because it was just a really wild time in my life, but I do remember seeing, like, the first detransitioner I ever saw was L. Palmer. I don't know if you know who she uh, is. Yeah, I know of her. Yeah. She uh, she was the first person I ever saw talk about that. And I was like, that's an option. <laughs> and that, and again, stuff like that really made me think, right, what am, did I need to do this? Right, right. Um, did, did any of your friends, your trans friends, get surgeries? Yeah, I, I've known, I mean, I, I've known a lot of them. Um, uh, trans trans identified males and females okay. in my time. So yeah, there, there there have been some that I can think of that like have gotten surgeries and stuff. Yeah, I'm not surprised. So hold on, how how old were you when you decided to stop taking hormones? Uh, seventeen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. So your parents, you said your dad was kind of like, okay, whatever makes you happy. You said your mom was upset when you came out as trans. Um, yeah. And they were, like, taking you to doctor's appointments and stuff. And, like, were were doctors, like, talking to them and explaining things to them about you being trans? Do you know? So that doctors didn't sit down my parents until like about that until we were in Rhode Island and I was admitted to the psych ward mm -hmm. and then we had a bunch of doctors like tell my parents like look you got to do this or your kid's gonna die so you were they said that in front of you to your parents yes <laughs> that's really fucked like yeah it's, sadly that seems that's like you know, and of course, like, I don't blame my parents at all in this situation, because what are you going to do if these professionals are telling you, like, hey, your kid needs this, or they're, or you're not going to have a kid anymore, you know? Right. Right. And, like, so. just, just that action of, like, saying that in front of your, in front of you, to your parents, like, you need to do this, otherwise your kid will die. Like, you may not, I don't even know what you're thinking in that moment, but it's possible that you you wouldn't have been suicidal if you weren't trans. But the fact that doctors are like, you need to do this, otherwise your kid will die. Like, you know, that, that can also influence the, the child or whoever it is they're talking about. Yeah. Like, that's really, really serious. Yeah. That gets into, like, the community stuff, too, even more of, like, the fear mongering right. with it. Right. Not just of like people in the community, but their their family members. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, did you uh, did you come out as a detransitioner right away, or what happened? So I was already like uh, towards the end of when I was taking testosterone. I was like, well, I'm not binary or whatever. Uh huh. So I was already like dressing femininely, quote unquote, whatever that means. And doing like, I'm just presenting differently. Sure. What I usually wear and stuff like that. And I was already like, wow, I kind of miss like 
being perceived as female and started really thinking about like all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember non-binary kind of cropping up out of nowhere and suddenly that was like a hot, you know, commodity identity also. Um, so you, you were trans and then you were kind of detransitioned, but then you were like saying you were non-binary. When did you finally just say, okay, I'm a woman? I don't know if I had like an epiphany moment about that or if it just kind of like naturally like happened, but I just kind of ignored my testosterone and stopped taking it and I, I, I don't know if I had like a real I am a woman moment until like way later that's probably. fine yeah 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 like actually realizing my place in this world and all the things that happen to women and all the barriers against us right and stuff like that you know like coming becoming aware of those things Right, right, definitely. Um, so you're, you've taken legal action against the quote unquote care you received. Yes. <laughs> you're you're filing a lawsuit. Yeah, I am. That's great. I get uh, it's against uh, not just the doctors that treated me, which I didn't know until I started the lawsuit that these were like two very important doctors in the sphere of transing kids and uh -huh. stuff like that. Uh -huh. So it's Dr. Jason Rafferty who wrote the, well, I think he was part of the people that wrote the, um, the gender for main care models for the American Academy of Pediatrics. Wow. Okay. And it actually didn't come out until I was, I was not his patient anymore. So it was like, wow, you were writing this actively while seeing me like not do well, but still prescribe me testosterone. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow. And then um, Mich Michelle Forcier, which people know her for the wacky things that she has said, and also being a doctor in that sphere and stuff like that. Well, I'm really proud of you for filing that lawsuit and they totally deserve it i mean they probably won't go to prison but i think they should be in prison honestly <laughs> I do. yeah be like i know i wasn't the only kid going to these places like i saw mainly young girls who were in my similar position into similar things that i was into whether it be like like fandoms or stuff and stuff like that or like have colored hair and our like our alternative sure, i guess sure. dressing listen to music and stuff like that like that was all the types of girls that i saw there and it it makes me it breaks my heart it's like interesting yeah i mean uh before before the hormones before the trans trend really happened like you know like there were these kind of more alternative girls just doing their own thing or whatever and you know well i, I have like a theory for it on those oh i want to hear it because a lot of like what has shifted to being the trans community a lot of, it is a lot of what like the pro anorexia like heroin chic i feel like back then was sure yeah definitely like I, i've seen a lot of overlap with 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 how those communities work online and stuff like that and it's just like it, 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 it it's all rooted in female insecurity and it just makes me really sad <laughs> yeah that is really very unfortunate um but i know i know what you're talking about and i've uh I've seen a similar thing, and I think that a lot of it, um, not all of it, but very much of it is, in fact, a response to childhood trauma. Um, mm -hmm. I think it can be childhood sexual trauma, childhood physical trauma. Um, and I don't, I'm, I'm honestly just, I'm 
totally at a loss as to how these medical professionals like don't connect those dots. You know? Yeah. Like that's just always going to be shocking to me. There's just also so much money in it that there's bound to be people who are scummy about it, you know? Absolutely. Um, yeah, definitely. I was kind of going to like, that's like my exact next question, which is, uh, I think that transgender surgeries are all inherently wrong. Like, I think it's wrong to trans children. I think it's wrong to trans adults also. Um, and clearly, like, money is is a giant motivator here. And same with uh, not just money, but that those doctors you were mentioning, that guy who wrote the freaking manual or whatever the fuck, the, the recognition that he gets, you know, is, is special yeah. and, and important to him. Um, have you, do you know the story of the boy raised as a girl? Oh, yes. Oh my God. Uh, fucking John Money did fuck that guy. Yeah, that was, I, I read the book. The, the grandfather of gender. Yeah, whatever. the grandfather of gender. I read the book by John Those poor boys. Yeah, I read the book by John Colapinto. It was very, very, I read that, I read that like a while ago. Um, it was actually published when I was a kid, and I remember seeing it like in the store when I was a kid, but I didn't read it. And then I read that actual book like, you know, years later. Um, it's really scary. And yeah, John, I think John Money is, is connected to a lot of this absolute nonsense. Um, I just, I want to say something to you that I, uh, purposely didn't put in our, our quick little briefing before we started recording. Um, and that's that I'm sorry because I'm not a medical professional. I didn't give you your treatment, but I'm actually partially responsible for what you went through because I ascribed to the trans rhetoric and I was like this you know, trans ally warrior, you know, telling everyone they were transphobic and shit. And like, that was part of the problem. So like, I'm sorry. I remember you, you talked about that in your, in your videos on like why you peaked and everything too. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I am so, sorry. It's a, I want to say it's okay. <laughs> Because, you know, I, I know it's not directly your fault, but it, 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 there's a lot of layers. There's a lot of layers. I mean, the thing is, though, is yeah. that it's it's really not okay. Because, like, yeah. I, even though I, I was very young when I thought this was the, the right thing to do, like, I still really could have, you know, uh, pieced this together and been like, mm, this isn't really a great idea, or I could have just not been a militant trans warrior, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. that also would have been better. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of this is having to do with the fact that people don't want to admit that they're wrong, like medical professionals don't want to admit that they're wrong. They don't want to admit that they didn't do the right thing. Um, and that's, that's really, really a problem. Definitely. Huge problem. Um, Even just in, like, in medicine in general. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, our call got dropped. I tried to call her back. Hello? Hey, sorry. I don't know what okay, happened. Gotcha. But you were saying just in medicine in general? In medicine in general, doctor's confidence gets people killed all the time, especially women. So One thousand and infinity percent. That's absolutely true. Um, that's a big problem, too, is just like the, the ego and the kind of like religious fervor that gets that is created from medicine as an institution yeah. 
people get really obsessed with that. They're, they think it's really special. They think that doctors can almost do no wrong, you know, and that's just such a problem. Yeah. Um, but how are you doing now? How have you been coping? I mean, I am mentally regarding the transition and stuff, doing a lot better than I was doing before. Good. You know, now that I've been at this for almost four years and everything. <laughs> That's good. Um, physically is another story. Um, so half, kind of like during, so I, I've been to like multiple doctors as well as not, like not just the first doctor, like when we moved back to Florida, I had to find a doctor here. Mm -hmm. And when I was seeing that doctor, I got pers I got diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Okay. And she continued to treat me anyway, and just gave me like thyroid medicine. Uh -huh. And then that turned into my antibodies getting messed up and then developing a Hashimoto's disease. Oh, wow. And then um, it just got so severe that like it affects like my health a lot. Um, it affects my periods, it affects my energy, it uh, hurts my joints a lot, like it's it's a constant battle with it and I'm pretty confident in saying that like I believe testosterone did that to me and you know instead of like stopping it I was just given a medicine <laughs> like right right um was there, was there ever a time, like, while you were on, you, you kind of briefly mentioned this, uh, you said you weren't doing so hot while you were on the, the testosterone, and you, you mm -hmm. voiced that to a doctor or two doctors. Yeah, so, uh, at that time, um, I was severely underweight when I was seeing him. Uh -huh. He also doubled as my psychiatrist, which... I don't think doctors sh should be able to be a pediatrician and a psychiatrist at the same time, regardless. Yeah, that kind um, of is problematic. Yeah, it, it is kind of problematic because I feel like there is a little bit of a conflict of interest there, but... Um, so he was seeing, like, in real time me, like, not eating or me going through my, like, my waves of depression with my episodes and stuff like that. and. Towards the end of 2017, I actually did attempt suicide. Like, my dad saved me. Thank and God. I was hospitalized, and then I just stayed on testosterone. <laughs> like, there wasn't any backpedaling. So they didn't, like, really analyze your treatment that much. They were just like, oh, yeah, okay, well, let's keep the testosterone going Th that was sort of it yeah wow yeah i i it, it was like it didn't even come into question that like that couldn't be a good thing to do like that that never that never came up but like at, at the same time now like with how loosey-goosey the laws are with giving people hormones and stuff in certain places like, you're called transphobic now if you suggest that somebody is not trans or that they've made a mistake. Yeah. Well, Even if you are a healthcare professional, like, there's been doctors talking about it, too. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah, that's really, um, it's, that's really messed up. Uh, I was kind of struggling to come up with a, a term for this. Um, I guess maybe I could call it like uh, commitment. Hmm. I don't I don't really know what a term for it could be, but like I think that a lot of people who are trans and maybe questioning it uh, just continue doing it because they've already committed, you know. No, definitely. Yeah. Um, there's, there's even been some, like, these transitioned women um, who I've seen talk about, like, I can't do anything. Like, I have to present as, as a male. Right. And stuff like that. Right. 
but I, or like yeah. no go ahead like on on the, the d-trans subreddit i swear like every day or every other day there's somebody talking about like am i too far gone blah 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 and it's like yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's depressing yeah that's that's really a problem but i mean like i do i am talking about that but i oh like even within that realm it's like there are people who, you know, maybe want to detransition or maybe want to stop taking um, hormones or what have you, but they, like, are, like, uh, like, I'm too far gone, like, I don't want to stop, like, this is, like, the plan, and I think that the, so that's, those are the, the patients, but I also think that the, the medical staff, like you mentioned, after your suicide attempt, they're, they're kind of in on that, too, they're like, oh, well, she's already been on hormones for this amount of time. Like, we've got to continue. You know, they, they're, they like, yeah. obsessed with the the commitment, which is very strange to me. I, I, I've definitely seen a lot of that. I've seen the phrase death before detransition thrown around a lot, too. Yeah. I'm, I, of course, have seen this hate for people who detransition at all. Yeah. I actually saw that as a sticker around my neighborhood death before detransition so I just scraped out the D so it's death before transition. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um but so you you do have some health problems that pretty much seem like they're very obviously from having been on testosterone. Um and that's that's really tough but like you're you're kinda learning to to manage those yeah yeah i'm i'm trying my best i mean i had to leave my previous job because it got really bad yeah and i don't know if i'm gonna be able to work a regular job soon i really want to because you know like i want to save money and live better and stuff like that yeah, you, you know? want to have a, a normal existence that's totally yeah. understandable yeah well and it's yeah it's difficult but. i mean it it takes time and yeah it's it is it is frustrating because like you you want to be better you want to you know do this that and the third but like it's it's just going to take time don't don't try to rush anything um yeah uh, so if you could talk to your younger self maybe your your younger self on on tumblr what would you want to say to her that is such a new like that's a tricky question i'd say yeah because i feel like my young self on tumblr was so wrapped in that mentality that I probably couldn't have pulled her out myself, you know, or I would have had to word it so specifically to cater to myself at the time. Right, right. Well, let me, let me ask you this. What would yeah. you, if you could say something to young women who are considering transition, what might you say to them? Oof. See, I thought about this a lot, but at the same time, like, there's so much I could say and i don't know part of me just wants to say like your body isn't your enemy you know being a woman as tough as it is it's a gift and you know we all have this great understanding of each other and we are all trying at least to support each other yeah and you know, and then, I don't know, like, there's just so much I could say, especially to my younger self of, like, you know, the reasons you were sexually assaulted aren't your fault and right. stuff like that. Right. And just. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something that uh you know needs to be addressed and that kind of thing um can i tell you why i think a lot of girls transition yeah go for it so uh i i definitely think that you know serious issues like 
sexual trauma or, or anything, you know, akin to that, or even physical trauma, those are huge factors or like anorexia or whatever. Those are definitely huge factors for sure. And they play a role, but I know that there are plenty of girls who have zero of that in their past and they also transition. And that is incredibly true. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really think it's because there are so many women, you know, you know, moms, teachers, just the general women that these girls are seeing that are such bad examples that that is that is very true i I, i'd say that is also a huge part like not having a strong female role model definitely skews how how you see women in general especially your perception of being female right that that women are just that these young girls are like oh my god i never want to be like her how do i get out of this and then they just Mm -hmm latch on to the trans tenderism, which is pretty scary. Yeah, you know, like, I don't know, they're just, like, I've, I've seen so many grown-ass women being like, oh, I can't go to the store and grab one thing before I spend an hour doing my makeup, you know, or, like, something yeah. just equally ridiculous like that. Or, I, I, yeah, like... A lot of our biggest insecurities as women come from our mothers, and right. I've definitely felt that a lot. Yeah. Like, I, I, like, thank goodness I'm able to have, like, a good conversation about my mom, like, to my mom, about these things now. But I knew in the past, she was trying to cater to men. She was shaping her legs and doing all of these things sure. and, like, taking all this time to do this these monotonous things so her husband is attracted to her. Right. Right. <laughs> it, it, instead of, you know, like, you know, like, at the same time being a mom and like doing all of these things it's just definitely definitely well is there anything else you wanted to say my darling oh my goodness i I could talk forever we could talk forever we could even do a part two if if that i'm down to do a part two (laughs) sometime if you want if you want to talk about like the specifics of other issues and stuff like that yeah like i'm so down definitely yeah this was really great um i'm trying to think if there's anything else i want to say um yeah i don't know if there's anything hi viewers it's very nice to meet you all that's so so kind of you well thank you so much for having a chat with me isabel i really appreciate it and thank you for having me on i'm very excited and if you if you if any anyone else who's de-transitioned comes to you and wants to have a chat with me just like give them my snapchat sure they're definitely okay awesome well thanks again we will be in touch okay Bye bye